Like and subscribe and click the bell icon to get new video updates. Country Women's Association marks 100 years with book on extraordinary contribution to the nation Don TB deceived by the perfectly baked scones or knitted tea cozies. The Country Women's Association is a force to be reckoned with. Since its inception in 1922, the camaraderie of women has acted as a catalyst for change and social justice in Australia and overseas. Unwilling to wait for bureaucracy to address the issues facing country families after World War I, volunteers took it upon themselves to improve living conditions, equip families for the Depression years, build and staff health care facilities, help save agricultural industries and aid local war efforts. That is a hard legacy to sum up in a book. But that is the task with which Adelaide Hill's author and historian Liz Huffwell has been entrusted. I have to say that it was probably the hardest challenge I've ever had as an author, a huge honour and a terrible responsibility, Ms Huffwell says. The CWA and their work has touched on almost every aspect of life in Australia over 100 years. CWA almost didn't tea happen the organisation was formed at a Bush Women's Conference during the Sydney Royal Show in April 1922, the culmination of work by several people including Florence Gordon, a Tamworth journalist hailing from the family behind the Gordon S. Gin Distillery in England. A driver of the conference, Florence's work on the farming newspaper The Stock and Station Journal attracted the support of politician Richard Arthur and Grace Munro a woman from a strong NSW pastoral family in Bingra with solid connections. While a staple in the history books now, the Country Women's Association might never have been. It was a real struggle. At one point, they almost thought about cancelling the conference because they were worried no one would show up, Ms. Huffall says. A small but very determined group of women did show up and on the third day voted to establish the Country Women's Association. It provided a rare and much-needed platform to discuss the challenges faced by country women and their families. Top of their list was transport and maternity health. There were very few hospitals in regional areas and no telecommunications, Ms. Huffall says. If one of their children got sick, they might have had to get into a horse and cart and travel for miles over a dirt track to get to medical help. Health care a priority for country around 60,000 infants died in Australia during World War I, the same number of men who died fighting at the front. And most of those infants died from preventable causes, Ms Huffall says. In the 30 years leading up to the CWA forming, 9,000 women died in childbirth in NSW alone. Families started to drift to the city where they believed the standards of living were higher. So there was a real need to address those living conditions and Appley country women in their families in order to build up Australian agriculture and the ability to grow food and things like all, Ms Huffall says. They decided not to wait and to do it themselves. They raised money, and they built their own little cottage hospitals, and they employed maternity nurses. They built baby health centres, hundreds of them, and took on the challenge of making a difference. War a big task for association if Ms Huffall could revisit any moment in the CWAS history it would be the time NSW State President Ada Beveridge delivered a speech in Sydney in 1939. There was a group of very influential women who were quite frustrated that the authorities had not recognised that women could help in the war effort and do it in an organised way, Ms Huffall says. They joined forces and held a public meeting at the Sydney Town Hall. Over 10,000 women showed up. They packed every space in the building and they spilled out into the street. She fired up an enormous crowd of women and challenged them to join the war effort and make a difference. For a full year she urged women to get ready, learn first aid, organise their households and start growing more vegetables. I think she was a woman of great foresight. She was very interested in international affairs. She had a university degree, was very well educated, and travelled a lot, Ms Huffall says. The CWA was soon making mass meals, uniforms and other resources. They were given a whole floor of the David Jones building in Sydney on which they set up training people to make camouflage nets. And people worked in there every day, Ms Huffall says. 
Every branch was involved in war work in some way and they maintained that pace throughout the war. As well as supporting those in service, many CWA members went on to serve in the Australian Women's Land Army, formed to combat rising rural labour shortages. The first recruits trained on Miss Beveridge's property. The CWA also established a service women's club to house and feed hundreds of women. There was nowhere in Sydney for women on leave.